evening, every good evening, everybody, and you are all welcome. Uh, thank we want you. to thank God for the gift of life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because there's that possibility that some people who are watching this may not be able to have the same privilege that we have. So we must live every moment as it is our last minute. Yes. So, Amen. yes, so before we start, um, I would always want to invite uh, the presence of God Almighty uh, in a prayer. Then I can carry on doing what I can. I'll feel free after that, as long as I know that he, we have invited him and uh, he he is amongst us. He's always among us, but we need to invite him. I acknowledge him. Yes. So, um, Pastor Dr. Ezron, I, I target you, my pastor, that you can <laughs> you can uh, present us to the Lord in prayer. You are muted. Okay. Yeah. Shall we? Shall we? Shall we pray, brethren? Our Father and our God, it's yet another time that you have given us to come before your throne of grace. We have all the reasons for thanking you. We are alive, we can talk, we can do the rest of the things that we are doing as human beings on account of your grace. And so we are grateful for this. As we come before you, Lord, we count these sessions of great blessings to our lives, to our families, and uh, even in our Christian journey as we prepare for eternity, because you have sent messages to us through your man servant and through your maid servant. They have been feeding us, and even this evening they will continue to do so. Hmm. We pray, Lord, that. Uh, the this atmosphere will be filled with the holy spirit we will hear you speak to us and um, our hearts will melt even the hard hearts hearts of stone and we will be willing to implement the messages that you have brought for us so we welcome you to be with us and to bless our gathering this night in jesus name we pray amen Amen. 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 Uh, thank you, uh, Pastor Hezron. Um, yes, uh, it's another night for Ilford Central, Himes Park, and the Serenity uh, Churches. Um, what a blessing. So we also in uh, want to say thank you for coming. Um, and I, I've been talking to Pastor earlier on, um, Pastor Gordon, to say that he, uh, our capacity is unlimited. Uh, to receive the good messages and information and teaching that uh, we have been having uh, since we started on the fourth. So today we are on day number four, I believe, of our um, our family enriching enriching family relation relational health for home and uh, for eternity. Um, when we started on the fourteenth, uh, they they covered uh, the four vital signs for family relational health and the following day it was mm, m plus m equals m m minus m equals m in marriage how is that then the four pressure points in youth relationships and tonight as pastor told us yesterday the dnra of family relational health so I want to take this moment, uh, Pastor Dr. Anton Gordon, to invite you and uh, our mother, uh, Sister Dolores uh, Gordon, who has been such a blessing to, to us um, in your joint ministry. We welcome you. And uh, as usual, you always bless us with beautiful songs. And for those who are not there, I complained. I said, sometimes God seems to be giving all the blessings or the <laughs> to just two people. 
but no, 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 no problem. So, Pastor, um, this is your time. I'm sure you can give us that, that very special uh, item for, I think Pastor has been well introduced um, by Amen. both Pastor Maslin and uh, Pastor Hezron. And uh, I can only say that he is a man of God uh, who is married to a woman of God <laughs> and uh, who is all over the world blessing God's people. Mm. That's all I can say. Pastor, it's your time. <clears throat> ah, praise the Lord. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, I, I am home. Did you hear that? Yes. I'm yes. home with you, my brothers and sisters. I have a little news to share with you. Uh, if you notice, uh, I hear you asking, so where is she? Where is she? Well, she's over 200 miles away. Wow. That means I'm not at the same place I journeyed away from uh, Dayton, Ohio, and I'm now in Cleveland, which is over 200 miles away. So it's a total setting. So Dolores is home, and I journeyed here, attending, coming with my son, who is Pastor Gordon, to attend a meeting, and I decided I'd come here. So I'm broadcasting to you from Cleveland. So Dolores is at home, and she sends her best regards. In fact, the likelihood is that she might be joining us on Zoom just the same. So that accounts for it. Please understand, God willing, I get back home this evening, another 200 odd miles driving my son and get back home and get back tomorrow as per usual. Okay. Yeah. Having said that, I will now uh, ask for uh, sharing privilege because I know I don't have that just yet. So once I get sharing privilege, then I will proceed and I'll, so it, you won't be blessed with the duet this evening. <laughs> Please accept the solar. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully the solar will uh, definitely not be as good as the duet, but <laughs> we'll see what works out. Do I have sharing privilege? Let's see. Let me try again. No, I don't have sharing privileges yet. I'm working on it. Oh, okay, sure. Good, 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 good. Mm -hmm. All right. So as quickly as we get that, then we will proceed. Ah, here she comes. Oh, she's there? Yeah, she's Ah, uh, Yes, I expected her. Let me see her. Uh, I've, I've opened the door for her. Okay. <laughs> yes, I'm on. All right. There she yes. is. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. You are welcome, right. Pastor. Okay. Del, I just told them that yes. I'm over 200 miles away from you, but we're together in spirit. All, All right. right. Praise the Lord. In the interest of time, and since Del will not be able to join me in singing because with the two mics open, it would be not uh, as, would get a feedback. So permit me, please. I'm going to hit the song. As I told him, Del, it's going to be solar for now. And hopefully it works just as good. Give me an extra minute as I get my thing set in place. I'll be with you momentarily. There we go. And there we go. Good. All right. Let's get to the song. Okay. My song. All right. So, my brothers and sisters, as per usual, I'm going to share with you this song from uh, the songbook about to be published and it is the title of the song is home in the garden and you will see the reason that we have selected this song you mute your mics it is song to the tune of jesus loves me this i know 
And I composed this one with the younger ones in mind. So I'll go now. In the garden, God came down. And in love he looked around, there in paradise they found, family life creation's crown, home in the garden, God's family started, home in the garden, God's love in hearts planted. In the garden, true love grew, husband, wife, a happy crew, heavenly family joined with her, angels sang in praise and mirth, home in the garden, God's family started, home in the garden, God's love in hearts planted. Third stanza. In the garden all went well, till for Satan's lie they fell. But God's promise seed stood tall, brought salvation, grace for all. Home in the garden, God's family started. Home in the garden, God's love in hearts planted. And the last stanza, in the garden, home restored, family love will be outpoured. God's eternal word shall stand, families live in glory land. Home in the garden, God's family started. Home in the garden, God's love in hearts planted. Amen. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Praise would, the Lord. I would listen to that over and over and over until I can't number those overs. <laughs> wow, you have done very well. I mean, with the, your dear wife not there uh, to blend a scene, ah. but yes, it's beautiful. Now, before Pastor uh, starts <coughs> tonight's presentation, <clears throat> can I just uh, say that um, if we can keep our mics muted, um, because sometimes there are things that happen which are not intentional. Correct. Uh, they just happen in the background. Um, so just keep your mics muted. If you've got any questions, uh, put them on the chat there as Pastor presents. Um, I'm sure you have some time to attend to those questions. Pastor, this is your time. Okay. Wow. Well. No, it's not. It's not muted. I don't muted see at... any red thingy. It's not it muted. Are we there now? Good, wonderful. Okay, let me, I'm just backing up to share with you. Okay, my brothers and sisters, let me just make sure again, are you seeing my screen okay? Can somebody give me a response? Just want to make sure. Yes. Wonderful. Yes, we are seeing. Beautiful. And so there we are again. And I notice our family number has gone again. We have seen many new, our trust new members are coming in. So I'm happy to be with you there, my brothers and sisters. The focus of our presentation for the two weeks is enriching family relational health for home and for eternity. And you will notice I've put on screen this time uh, just a quick review, the subjects that are ticked, those that are underlined are those. So in truth and in fact, my dear brother, as you introduced us, uh, the presentation is not in the order as is on the screen. So it is, I will announce each evening what the order will be. So again, remember uh, the, the, the thrust is 
treating relationship the health way. So we began, I'm giving a quick review. We began with this topic, family relational health, biblical priority. Then we went on Sunday to look at uh, making home a citadel of peace. Then yesterday, we looked at the subject, building family resilience through prayer. And I'm very thankful again for the feedback, not only from the pastoral leadership team, but from members who have been responding. And so today, the subject is the family at the crossroads. The family at the crossroads. And tomorrow, God willing, the subject will be the four vital signs of family relational health. In as much as you've been meeting them since uh, uh, when we began on Sabbath afternoon, in fact, we are going to go into the four vital signs a little deeper than we've been accustomed to. In fact, we're going to go into the pharmacy tomorrow. Yes, the family relational health pharmacy. Remember now that my practice as a family psychotherapist, I'm a psychologist, I'm not a medical doctor, but I make a parallel in treating the relationships in the mind with how the medical team treats the body. So we'll be going to the pharmacy tomorrow. And by God's grace, uh, we'll be getting a bond booster. So we'll be getting a booster shot. Yes, as to how to build up and maintain those vital signs so that your family stays alive and well. Now, beloved, let me speak a language that I know is quite familiar to many of us. I'm talking about the Siamese twin from the Garden of Eden. And because I use the term Siamese, you know that when the term Siamese, we're talking about twins that are, in fact, another term, the, the more appropriate term is conjoined twins, conjoined. In the case of this twin, from the Garden of Eden, and you're seeing their names on your screen, they were born and bonded together in love. The twin is the family and the Sabbath. My brothers and sisters, those who are visiting us, if by any chance you are not of yet of this household of faith, I am making that appeal in the spirit that by the time you are through with this presentation, you will see reason to become a part of God's family so that you can be a member of the twin. Yes, because the twin was born, they were conceived, they were born and bonded at the heart of God. Therefore, they are inseparable, the family and the Sabbath. Let's go a little further. You see, I want to show you something here, that God plus human being, that is to say, man plus woman. When you bring that combination together, you get a Venn diagram divine and human relationship. Yes, are you getting that? So when you see in the Garden of Eden, that's why we sung that song at the beginning. In the Garden of Eden, this is what actually happened. The divine joined with the created human and a relationship was established. established. And so when God made the first two human beings, by the way, this is as basic and fundamental and foundational as you can get. Yes. So let us remember now, it's the relationship that came out of the Garden of Eden and that sin 
impaired. It is that garden that by the grace of God, we are seeking to treat the healthy way. So then let me remind you that these presentations are designed to present God's original ideals, to impart knowledge, to impact and change behavior. The presentations are designed to enrich relationships, to improve the quality of life for family members and the community and the world in preparation for Christ's soon return. So as you listen again, as you participate again, and if you are new and you're participating for the first time, remember, this is not intended for you to leave the set and say, I enjoyed it. It was so nice. What is more important is that your heart was arrested and it was burned within you for something better or to continue on the good path that you are on. Having said that, we sung the song already as we did yesterday. And there's another one at the bottom of this presentation that I'll be singing for you again. So, oh, and by the way, don't, remember, don't forget, God willing, in another couple of weeks from now, the song book with 52 brand new songs that I've composed will be available and we'll let your pastor know how this can be had in your church. All right, so the subject for today again, the family at the crossroads. What is intended in this presentation? This presentation is designed to show four major negative psychosocial effects of sin. Remember, psychosocial means the effect on the mind as a result of what is happening around you. Psycho, the mind, social, society, or surrounding. So there are four negative psychosocial effects of sin on God's original family structure. And I'm going to provide you with professional counsel on maintaining the ancient landmarks of good Bible-based family life presentations for the Lord's return. All right. All right. And so remember this. You're going to see some things. You're going to see some slides. You're going to get some reviews each night and say, oh, yes, that went last night. For those of you who are just coming on, you're going to see something that you never met before. So, for example, I said the family is under attack. That's why we're doing these presentations. And the call is, let us fight back. Not just fight back, but fight back against the forces. Let's go into it some more. So you met this text yesterday, and you're going to see it again, for those of you who are with me, the same text again, the same anchor text, but you're going to see how it is applied this evening. So here's the anchor text. Your, mute, your mic's are muted, but you can read it there. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And in my book, the same songbook, I have also had 52 paraphrased Bible verses, paraphrasing the context of family relational health, including this text, which you just read. So now here's a paraphrase of the text. For we wrestle not against ordinary marital, parental, and general family relational challenges, but against the continuous deteriorating standards of this world. We're wrestling against the subtle 
forces. Wait a minute. When in the Bible did you meet the word subtle? Aha, I know you got it. No, the serpent was more subtle than the other beast. What does the word subtle mean? The, the prefix sub means under. So the forces of evil are operating from under. Another word for that is covert. You don't see it until you feel it, until you experience it. But these days, sin has become so barefaced that it's no longer covert, it's now overt. So we are wrestling against the subtle forces set at destroying God's original family ideals. We are wrestling against the corrupt, immoral practices of this 21st century, this age. And these immoral practices are operating not from ordinary sources, but from high academic, high religious, high social, and other influential stages in the society. My brother, my sister, your family is vulnerable. Sorry about that. Did I say your? Our families are vulnerable. We are exposed, but the gates of hell will not prevail because the grace of Christ is sufficient as long as we allow his grace to find its rightful place in our minds. Do you notice I have, I, I told in the first presentation that when the Bible uses the word heart, it really means the mind. So as a psychologist, that's where I work, the mind. That's why we're seeking to fortify. So yesterday you got this alarm and it is coming again. It's ringing and it's flashing. Remember, the subject is the family at the crossroads. Yesterday, we dealt with the subject family resilience. The alarm is on. What alarm? Oh, warning. Warning. Good Bible-based family life is fast becoming an endangered species. Say that again. Good, not just family life, you know, but Bible-based family life is fast becoming an endangered species. Dr. Gordon, what do you mean? That good family life is becoming an endangered species. Let me use Jesus' method of teaching. Actually, Ellen White, under inspiration, wrote a book by that very title, Christ Object Lessons. You know the book? Because Jesus taught by object lesson. What does that mean? He used the things that we know to teach us the things that we do not know, but need to know. So let's talk about endangered species for a while. The albacore tuna, the amor leopard, the Andean condor, the Arctic fox. These animals are among the endangered animal species in the world. I, I never heard about the babirusa, which is an animal somewhat like the pig. Then there's the Arctic fox. There's the banteng. Have you ever heard about that animal? It did exist. And some they do exist, but the numbers have become 
lore and lore for many reasons. I'm not an, uh, a zoologist or any in that field. Suffice to say, some of these animals are endangered. Do you know what they do with endangered animals? Listen to me, church. They build a sanctuary so that those can be preserved. Does God have a sanctuary on earth? Yes, he does. The church. And by the church, I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about the body, the, the ecclesia that he called out. And then he says to the leadership of the church, which is why your church is having this series now, find the endangered family members and bring them into the sanctuary and teach them, educate them, arm them with relational skills because good Bible-based family life is becoming endangered. You soon don't know what it is to mean by good family because we're in a changing world because the family is under attack. Let me give you a proof. You see, the family today has been played from centuries ago with multiple distortions. Do I hear somebody saying, what is that in that black box? It looks kind of hard to read, correct? Because I designed it so. It is distorted. It's not easy to see very plain and simple. That is what good family life is slowly becoming. Mm -hmm. You see, that result in a complex confusion in our hands, in our feet. Yes? No. <laughs> the complex confusion is in our minds. So what is really right? What is good? Who says that it has to be a man marry a woman? Well, after all, if any two people are in love with each other and they want to marry and live their lives together, any two people, as long as they love each other, that's fine. That's the complex confusion. And even Christians, can I, may I narrow that down? Even Seventh-day Adventist Christians, the Bible says, if Jesus doesn't come on time, even the elect will be deceived. Even some of our children who grew up in the church, when they go out there to these educational institutions and these social institutions and the hair versions well you know it doesn't matter seriously if a man loves a man and if a woman loves a woman and they get married uh, we should respect them just the same and if our young people are not grounded in the truth they will fall for it That's what I mean by varying versions of good Bible-based family life. It is slowing down. But trust me, God has a people. 40 other of those families are represented on this set right now. And when you come off, you will say, thank you, God. By God's grace, I am going to do everything in my power. Whether I am married or single, man, woman, boy, girl, young, old, it doesn't matter who you are. Have you, when you hear this, you will say, by the grace of God, I am going to stay the course. Let's go on further. So let's talk about the family at the crossroads. 
let's go into it deeper. Ready? Well, first of all, let's talk about the ancient landmarks. The question is, are there ancient landmarks for Christian families today? Answer, Proverbs 22, 28. The Lord inspired the answer. Remove not the ancient landmarks which thy fathers, beginning with Adam, have set. Don't remove them. Don't tamper with them. Despite all that is happening around you, find the ancient landmark and stay the course. Let's go again and use object lesson. London has some very famous landmarks. For example, the Tower Bridge. It is referred to as London's iconic 19th century landmark, was designed by Sir Horace Jones. I have had the privilege, Dolores and I, to have been in London. We have gone all over the place, and we have been to this Tower Bridge. We have been to the Moving Bridge. We have been all over London. And anybody who comes to London as a tourist, among the landmarks that they will be told to go and find is the Tower Bridge. Now let's talk about the landmarks of God's original family structure, how he designed the family to develop. Let's go. He began it with one mature adult male. Let's get it again. One mature adult male and one mature adult female. That's how God began it. And then he married them. And the man did not change from a man, he remained male. But when he was married to the woman, he became husband. And the woman, when she was married to the man, she didn't change from being a woman. She had an, another title. She became wife. And then, according to Psalm 127, the Lord blessed their womb despite the effect of sin because his word to them was be fruitful and multiply. And so the family expands and the husband, no, the same man became a husband and now he's a father and the same woman became a wife and now she's a mother and then joining them is a child or children and they become parents and you notice the family is expanding because the children become siblings, brother and sister. Hello there. I want you to watch how the ancient landmarks continue to be rooted. And then the family extends. So the family begins. Then the family expands. Then the family extends. And this is God's progressive developmental order. Well, the church, God's sanctuary, has a job on its hand, dear pastor. Because we have got to make sure that this original ancient landmark remains even in this 21st century and until Jesus comes. That's why we're having this series. So let's go back again. We see that in the Garden of Eden, this Siamese called the family 
was bonded at the heart of God with the inseparable twin named the Sabbath. God's original family landmark. Question again. Are there relationship landmarks for Christian families today? Did I hear you all say, of course there are. I'm asking a question. How are you keeping it? Beloved, what are the principles, the practices? Notice the Bible have beside them. Bible principles, Bible patterns, Bible practices, Bible ideals, Bible standards, Bible values, Bible mores. And we could list all more of these cultural and psychosocial terminologies. But they are all anchored in the Bible. The church needs to teach these, the heritage of all the Seventh-day Adventist principles and practice need to be held up like a beacon before our young people and before the world so that those who are watching, if by any chance you have never heard this before, don't credit it to Dr. Gordon. Don't give me any credit, please. I have no credit to take. All I'm doing, I'm the voice of the Lord, like others are, presenting the old Bible truth. Praise the Lord. Let's go on. Well, I told you, I showed it yesterday, that the reason we have to do this is that we're in a changing world. That ideals change, values change, morals change, and standards change. But the word of God remains. Amen. I hear like the old place is, is lighting up now with amen, amen. Praise the Lord. You see, beloved, I want to remind you of something. That the ancient family landmarks, we must not remove them. That God the father and the designer of the family has said, despite what is happening in the, to the contrary around us, despite the changing world. Oh yes, and by the way, wait, let's not throw away the baby and the bath water. Let's not talk about this world is changing and it's bad. It's not bad. It's not all that is bad. Because if it were bad, you would not be able to be joining me on Zoom. It's technology that has developed. And we say, thank God for enriching the minds of men so that when COVID struck and we had to close the church doors, we could have the church at home. So all is not bad about the changing world, but we need our family eyes to be washed with family eye salve so we can see and we can discern what is good to be kept and what is bad to be abhorred. That's why we're having these series, because good Bible-based family life is on the brink of extinction. And the amber light is what is flashing around us. But the day will come when the light will turn solid red. And that I will hear, let him that is holy remains holy. Lord, help me. Help my dear wife. Help all my brothers, my sisters who are tuned in today. Help us all to be among those who will be holy when you come. And the extension of the text, those that are unholy remain unholy by God's grace. Let the second part be not pronounced upon you, my brother. So question is, what does it mean to be at the crossroads? 
in life or of life. What does it mean? Oh, well, you know, in modern highways there in England, London, and in America and Canada and in Africa and all the metropolises of the world, you'll see roads like these in Japan and wherever, you know, as Bill and I get a chance to travel with some of these winding roads, they're so, they're so circuitous, these express motorways that for the, listen to me carefully now, please, for the inexperienced driver, you could get confused because there's road to cross and this one twists and gone. What does it mean to be at the crossroad of life? Number, I'm going to give the four negative. I told you there were going to be four negatives. Crossroad number one is called uncertainty. What is right? And by the way, there's a great professor called Professor, he, he wrote the book, Professor uh, Fletcher. He wrote the book, situation ethics. Can I tell you what is the essence of situation ethics? Listen to how it sounds nice. Nothing is intrinsically right or wrong. It depends upon the situation. That sounds nice. No way. God's word are clear and distinct and unequivocal as to what is right and what is wrong. Satan and the forces of evil bring in uncertainties. Well, Eve, if you eat the fruit, you shall not surely die. By the way, he couldn't take out the word surely, you know. Because he couldn't say he wouldn't die, because he knows that. Oh, yes, Satan knows that. So when there is uncertainty strong in the mind, uncertainty can lead to, did I hear you? Confusion. Mm -hmm. And confusion, if it is not cleared up, can lead to bewilderment. Bewilderment, you throw up your hand, by the way. Sometimes people in bewilderment who cannot get out of it, you know what's the answer they give for it? They simply say, whatever. They throw up the shoulder. Whatever. Anything goes. I don't know. Bewilderment. And then bewilderment can lead to dilemma. Dilemma. Dilemma is a state of mind, oh, a best way to explain it for you is between the devil and the deep blue sea. Which one do you prefer to be in? Dilemma is to jump out of the frying pan and jump into the fire. Which one do you prefer? That's a dilemma. And families today are in dilemma. So, you know what dilemma leads to? It leads to something I mentioned to you last night. And I'm going back to it now. Hosea chapter 4. Do you remember? God's lament. What was God's lament again? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's what dilemma leads to. Lack of knowledge. And how did we look about it? It pointed out last week that when we apply this dilemma to families, notice I'm saying it different now, but it's the same thing. Many families are have been destroyed because of the dilemma of ignorance. Come on now, talk to me. Because of the dilemma of ignorance, many families have been destroyed for lack of knowledge. And I said to you in my book coming out in another wee, few weeks, there's a whole chapter that speaks to the matter of family ignorance. Many families are being destroyed as we speak 
because of the dilemma of ignorance. Many families, God forbid, will be destroyed. And my prayer, oh God Almighty, please do not allow any family who is represented on the set this evening to have this prophecy fulfilled in them. You see, beloved, Christian families are under construction. Hey, I wanted to get that. Families are under construction today for tomorrow. That sounds nice. Is your family under construction now? Because there's an eternal significance to this. Let me show you what I mean. Look, follow my screen quickly. I'm going to move fast. You see on screen, God, time, eternity, and the family. Let me explain something to you. When God in his divine wisdom, in eternity, God stepped out of eternity. God stepped out of eternity because the Bible says, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. So from God stepped out of eternity, blocked off a portion of eternity and called it time. In that time, he made creation. And the, 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 the masterpiece of creation was families. So God stepped out of eternity made families, and when he made the first family, he made them conditionally mortal. They were not immortal. They were mortal, conditionally, subject to their obedience to him, so that he would carry them over into eternity with him. Unfortunately, something happened. Sin interrupted. But my brothers and sisters, God sent the Elijah message, which we call the end time message, to help families to have hope that one day fa families will join God in eternity when time shall be no more. So let's take a look at the Elijah message as we wind down. The Elijah message makes a last day appeal with a beacon, a signal light. Hello, hello. There's a critical message coming up from the Elijah message. What is the message? Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. And I call this the Elijah message and family bonding. Here is a text. Behold, this is the Lord speaking. I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. What is Elijah the prophet coming to do? He's coming to turn the hearts, yes, of the fathers to the children. And the hearts of the children to the fathers. And the Lord says, if the hearts of fathers do not turn to their children and allow their children's heart to turn to them, I am going to strike the earth with a curse. My brothers and sisters, I am not a prophet of doom, but I've got to tell you that we already are seeing evidences of the curse. But thanks be to God, there is still hope. So if there's somebody who is tuning in and is the first time you're hearing this message and the Holy Spirit is piercing it to your heart, say amen. And then pray the prayer. Lord, help me. To get it right. Then after this, find a solid Bible-believing church. And I only have one 
out of the honesty of my heart to recommend to you, based on my own conviction, having been baptized into this church on the 16th of April, 1972, I recommend to you God's last day church, the seventh day Adventist church that is the sanctuary on earth to gather that which is left, to gather the endangered species and hold them lovingly together in the sanctuary in preparation for the Lord to come. So if you have not yet been held in, come on in. I appeal to you, don't allow this message to pass by without you surrendering your heart to the Lord. Beloved, the divine imperative is to preserve the original landmarks of family life. How do you preserve it? By being kind one to another. Tender-hearted, forgiving one another to the same extent, just like how God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. You know, I took out the word even. That's what it means. Be kind, be tender-hearted, be forgiving of one another, even as Christ, for, as God. For Christ's sake. What does it mean for Christ's sake? Because Christ, every time you pray and ask him, forgive me, that prayer goes to Jesus, our Savior, who is the mediator, who is interceding in the heavenly sanctuary. And every time you pray that sincere prayer, the Holy Spirit transports you into the very presence of Jesus. And when you say, Jesus, I apply for your grace. Jesus will take your prayer and present it to the Holy Father and say, Father, forgive him for my sake. Do the same thing for your husband, your wife, your sister, your brother, your cousin, your friend, your colleague who has done you wrong. Because if you don't do it that way, you ain't make it into the kingdom. There's a subject coming up on that. So, beloved, as I close this presentation and open for, as the leaders will allow for any feedback, questions, or comments, all of you families from those three churches, you have samples of your there. I want you to look on the screen. The last anchor text is... Let this mind, that is to say, the mind of Christ, be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Question, how does the mind of Christ comes into the minds of us family members from Ilford, Hyams Park, Serenity, and uh, you, our dear visiting friends from various churches or wherever, put your name in there. Question again. How does the mind of Christ get into my mind, the church family's mind? Look at my screen. That's the way it gets via the Holy Spirit. I want you to get that again. So the mind of Christ will get into our minds by the Holy Spirit. So if you're there and the mind of Christ is not in you yet, pray that prayer. If you are there and the mind of Christ is waning in your mind because of the pressures of life in your mind, the Holy Spirit is available to put the mind of Christ into your mind, your relational mind, and make you and your families become more and more like Jesus. 
I'm closing, that's it. And before I pray with you, before I give you the closing song, I am now open again as per usual, just in case there are questions, comments, leaders, whoever is in charge, please take over and entertain any comments or question and by the grace of that I seek to respond. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Gordon, for such um, for yet another beautiful presentation, uh, family at the crossroads, uh, crossroads of uncertainty, crossroads of confusion, crossroads of bewilderment, crossroads of dilemma. Now, uh, <clears throat> to all my friends, uh, everybody who has been listening, uh, there could be some questions that he you want to put across to Dr. Gordon. Uh, if you want to, uh, I don't see anything written on the charts, but uh, you can raise your hand or you can unmute yourself and then just ask that question. Correct. I, I would be willing to entertain such. I look forward to that. Any response, any Thing. And please remember, I did say, uh, let's see here, if there is a possible even way elect can be deceived. Yes. Okay. May I take that question, Elder? Yes, please, Pastor. <clears throat> the question is, is there was a possible way that uh, the elect can be deceived? Well, thank you, Holy Spirit. Who, as far as you know, was the first elect of God? Did I hear you say Adam and Eve? You are right. They were not only elected. They are the only ones who God made with his hand, formed them. They are the only ones, according to record, who God knelt over and breathed straight into them. You could not be more elect than that. But you know what God never did? He never made them into robots. Yeah. He gave them a free choice that they could choose to lovingly obey him. Well, you know what the record is? Eve never did she chose to be deceived Adam well he chose Eve over God so Adam was not deceived by the way Eve was deceived Adam chose to sin by siding with his wife and they both were victims and so they both were indeed deceived now if those two original could be deceived what say you and me we are for our brains our minds are for thousand years dwarfed so we are we are totally vulnerable any little foolishness can deceive us but thanks be to god the same holy spirit who spoke the evangelium which says i will put enmity between your seed and his seed, that is the seed, that is the, the, the agents of Satan, the Holy Spirit, speaks to Anthony Gordon. He speaks to Dolores Gordon. He speaks to my children. He speaks to you. So you don't have to be deceived. That's why we have presentations like these. So yes, the elect, which means those who accepted the Lord. You can still be deceived. Therefore, do not take it for granted. Study, drink it in, take it seriously. 
so that you may not be deceived. Thank you very much, Pastor. Um, unfortunately, I'm not seeing any charts uh, from my end here. It's clean. It's a clean, clean, clean board. Um, I, I think I saw something went in a while ago. Can you read what came in a while ago? Let us hear. No, on mine, uh, there was nothing apart from Amen. Uh, that's the only one which I, there's, there are no, oh. yeah. If, if there's anything you can see there, Pastor. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Yes, I think there is some. Is that a what is that? Um, maybe okay, it's direct, maybe it's uh, sent directly to you, Pastor. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, it sent directly to me. You said. Yeah, maybe they send direct to you. I see here. Okay, I see. Thanks. I appreciate that. And I said, look at the words. If, if it were possible. Yes, okay. Maybe the person is, um, is emphasizing if it were possible. Well, let me explain. Maybe the person is saying, the words oh. say, if it were possible. Uh, is the person want to come in and speak? No, pass. Just get on, I think. Um... Oh, okay. Yes. The person seemed to be emphasizing and say, it says, if it were possible. Well, let me explain the conjunctive if means that left to the forces of evil, all those who accept the Lord would have been deceived. That's what the if implies, but it is also an implication for caution. Hey, thank you, Holy Spirit, for illuminating my mind. Let me say that again. The if it were possible is a statement of caution. Beware, you who are elected. It is not impossible that you could be deceived because the devil, like a roaring lion, if it were possible, if you let your minds carelessly, he will deceive you. So do not interpret the if it were possible to, to think it means once you accept the Lord, you can't be deceived. There's no truth in that. Because even Jesus, thank you again, Holy Spirit, he shines through. He, he, he went straight for Jesus. You're hungry. Face it. And you can turn stone into bread. Do it. Jesus could have done it. But if he did, he, Jesus, would have been deceived. And he could not have been our savior. So, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, when the human pressure of the cross struck Jesus, he would have been deceived if he had yielded. And the human side said, Father, do I have to go through this? And then the Holy Spirit, the supporting member of the Godhead, who is available to Anthony Gordon, call your name, who is available to all of us, when our moments of weakness, close to deception, if we call to him, although it would have been possible to deceive us, he will come in and rain out the forces of evil. That's what it means. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Gordon, for, for that explanation. Um, there appears to be a question. Um, I don't know if I'll put it uh, correct uh, from my understanding. Mm -hmm. Breaking trauma bonds, how can, you uh, how can we practically advise or how to practically advise breaking trauma bonds? 
I'm not so sure if Samsung would want to expand on that question. Yes, I'd love to get a little more on that because I'm trying to interpret breaking through my bones. Uh, I don't know if, if the person who raised the question, please don't give up. Please come on if you don't. I'd be nice if you could unmute, but unmute your mic at least and, and uh, tell us what you expand on the question. Let me see if I can answer it, please. Thank you. All right. It doesn't look there are any more questions. Um, maybe he's trying to say, how can we, how can you advise uh, on practical ways of breaking uh, trauma bones? You know, there are many people who are going through traumatic. Um, uh, Wait a minute, see some but trauma, oh, it's bones. Trauma bonds, negative relationship trauma. Bonds, oh, 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 oh. So what's the question again now? I think a little, it's breaking through the bonds. Okay, well, first of all, the bond is in the mind. As I establish, all human relationship begin and continue to exist in the mind. So bond, B-O-N-D, now I got you, bond. That is the tie. Tomorrow, God's willing, I'm going to expand on the bond for you. You are guaranteed to get it. It's the tie, that, uh, that link in the mind with another mind, in the case of husband and wife, parents and children, family members. But sin can break the bond, yes? Because sin is negative, Sin is a mental disease. And when sin gets into the mind, it affects anything that is in the mind. And the major thing that is in the mind is relationship between God and human and between human and human. When sin comes in there, it breaks, it crash, it crumbles it and break it up and you don't feel that same bond with him or her again. It's broken. Trauma. Yes, I saw the word there. Sometimes some experiences that some people go through in life with who should have been loved ones. Yes. Sometimes the trauma is so intense that it breaks the bond. And I don't want to see him again. I don't want to see her again. I don't even want to hear his or her name because the bond, the trust, the love, the affection is broken. May God help you, my brother, my sister. May God help me and my family that the bond that is in our minds will never be broken because they are kept in place because we are bonded with Christ. Oh, that was a lovely question. I think the question came off the, 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 the Siamese twin, the born, in the born, yes, and bonded, bonded at the heart. But sin can, unfortunately, break the bond. But where sin abounds, grace much more abound. Thank you. I got the question and I sir, was in line with the question. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> I think that brings us to the end of tonight's presentation. And uh, we, we can't go before we hear that song. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try for yeah. it. And I was just trying to say, I haven't uh, had the response from your dear wife. I was going to ask if she could close for us. If that's All right. Okay. So, right. Good, good. All right. So, Dolores, dear Art, you will stand by to pray for us as I will uh, do the closing song. Okay. Now, so here's a song. It's called God of Families, and it is composed to the tune of Great is Thy Faithfulness. All right, so again, hey, guess what I'm going to do? 
as I did the, the past days, I'm going to sing the first or so two stanzas, and then I'm going to ask the volunteers to sing the other two stanzas once I set the pace. Okay, so here we go. Oh God of families, you gave relationships, body and mind, in one unit you made. We lift your voice as we echo your praises. All sin and self now fade to your honor and fame. Body and mind you made. The twain should never fade. Harmoniously you designed them to grow. Balanced and blended in mutual movement. Body and mind as one is your intent. Second stanza. O God of families, Anchor your peace within. Give us the passion for life and for love. Wholeness we need for relational healing. Body and mind, oh, the fullness combined. Body and mind you made. The twain should never fail fade harmoniously you designed them to grow balanced and blended in mutual movement body and mind as one is your intent all right is there somebody who wants to take a shot at it and sing the third stanza Unmute your mic as somebody did last evening and sing on the third stanza. Let's hear. I'll catch up if you need any help. Who's there? Body and mind you made, combined our wonders being made Be in, good. Made in your made potential, potential unseen. Continue. Rescue, restore, Red. rescue, restore your great mission from above. Throughout eternity, Through eternity our subject, subject your, your love. love. Wonderful. And the chorus now, body, body and, and mind. mind you made. The twain should never fade. Harmoniously, you design them, design to, them grow. to grow. Balanced, Balanced and, and blended in mutual movement. Body and mind as one is your intent bless your heart sister amen now if somebody else <laughs> want to take the fourth stanza good that's the spirit <laughs> who wants to take the fourth by the way i haven't heard any bass voices yet yeah I'm, I'm, I'm going for it now pastor i'm going go for it, for it brother <laughs> sing oh god of families give us connection strong to build rapport and communicate well. Amen. These vital signs of relational wholeness. Great. Will bond secure and, su and support evermore. Praise the Lord. Score us now. Body, Body and mind you made that when should never fed harmoniously. Yes. You designed them to grow. Balanced and blended in mutual movement. Amen. Body and mind as one is your intent. God be praised. Sister G, are you there? 
pray the closing prayer for us. Are you there, Sudad? Yeah. Yes, I am. Praise the Lord. Pray for us shortly. Let us present us to the Lord and let us get off the set and send the brethren home. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your wonderful love towards us. We thank you for even thinking about us and having made us. Oh God, the evil one has come in and has caused this separation, this gulf. He has turned the family upside down. But Father God, we know that you are there. And Lord, we know that you want to save us. Oh God, our hearts burn within us when we hear your words. And we know that you will do anything to save us. So even now, Lord, we clasp our hands in yours through the power of the Holy Spirit, we ask that you will help us, Lord, to internalize these messages. Again, they are simple messages. They are your words that we have heard. But yes, we need to hear them over and over again so that we can digest them. Help us, O oh Holy Father. And when we know that this is so important to you, give us the strength to stand by it and to share it and to live for you by speaking it to others. And oh Lord, save us and our children and our children's children when you come because we are planning to hang on in the name of Jesus. All those on the set, whatever the challenge is, whether it is family issues or individual issues, Lord, you are the bomb in Gilead. And all we need to do is to cry out and reach out to you and you will help us because you promised. And so they're gone. Again, we say, what we cannot do, step in and do for us because we are asking you. And in the name of Jesus, save us and heal our families because we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, thank you so much. Maybe before <clears throat> we, we go, Pastor, you normally tell us what is there tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, uh, the subject tomorrow will be, again, the four vital signs. But tomorrow, we are going into the family relational health pharmacy. So I'm going to be do, looking at the four vital signs, and then I'm going to give us a bond booster shot to strengthen our bond. So it's a big, big time tomorrow. Bring all the family members in. Let everybody come in to get their booster. <laughs> yes, the booster. And beloved, let me say this to you. I do not use these terms tritely. My practice is family relational health. And I draw a parallel between medical care of the body and psychological care of the mind. So when I use these terms, they sound very interesting and say, oh, that's interesting, booster shot. It means booster for the mind. So pray to God that tomorrow as we look at the vital signs, the booster you will get will make your family stronger even the more. That's the subject for tomorrow evening. God bless oh. you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Gordon. Uh, thank you, everybody who came tonight. Uh, please invite, uh, bring friends, bring uh, families, so that we are, it's not only our, our families that are saved, but other people's families, even within the community, not only Adventists, 
but right. invite everybody. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, before we go, uh, Dr. Gordon, thank you yes, so Pastor. much. <laughs> that, that was uh, spirit inspired. And uh, we, thank, we thank God for his spirit who is uh, always in our midst to bless, to bless this, this, uh, this meeting. So thank you so much. We continue to pray for you and your wife, you. Deloris. Uh, Elder Mugaza, thank you for hosting us. And uh, members, I am Spark uh, Elders. Uh, tomorrow we would like to, in fact, the church board, I am Spark tomorrow after, after we finish tomorrow. We want you to remain behind to uh, discuss an, an item and vote on it. And uh, Pastor Maslin, you will join us tomorrow as well during that meeting. Otherwise, brethren, thank you so much and have a good, and have a good evening. Good evening to you, Pastor. Yeah, good evening Pastor, to all you. of you. Look yeah. forward to seeing.